Good evening. Citizen engagement is an aspirational ideal for participating in the public square. But what happens when the engaged citizen is the wrong kind of vlogger or influencer? When a blogger is actively involved in spreading this information, do we give up on the aspiration or do we stay committed to the ideal? Another way to phrase this concern is to ask, where are the good bloggers and how do we encourage them? These are questions that come to mind when I reflect on the issue of blogger accreditation. I am John Neri, and you are in the public square. The declaration of intent by the incoming Marcos administration to accredit vloggers and influencers, to allow them to cover presidential press briefings, is controversial for two reasons. It continues a Duterte administration policy favoring bloggers at the possible expense of journalists, and it flattens the distinction between journalist and blogger. But the response to the declaration was also problematic. But the Nation National Union of Journalists of the Philippines did welcome the possibility of wider access. Many journalists were privately and publicly distancing themselves from the bloggers. A sense of professional boundary setting overcame our profession. And in our rush to condemn the flattening of distinction between journalists and bloggers, we made a similar mistake of flattening the distinction between bloggers themselves. I would like to understand this issue of blogger accreditation by pushing back against the flattening of discourse. How do we protect the space carved out for journalists while encouraging more bloggers to take part in the public sphere? We are joined tonight by two friends and colleagues who can make sense of the issue. Noemi Lardizal Dado. Noemi Lardizabal Dado is a prominent blogger of long standing, an active social media practitioner, and a content strategist. She is also co founder of Blog Watch. Dr. Diosa Labiste is Associate Professor of Journalism at the College of Mass Communication at the University of the Philippines, Diliman. Before entering the academe, she was a community journalist for some 20 years. Good evening, Noemi and Diosa. Thank you for making time for this. Good evening. Good evening, Chan. Uh, Noems, let me start. Uh, this is not a new policy, right? I mean, it's not completely out of the blue. Yes, before anything else, um, I'd like to correct a little bit the good blogger. I mean, I'm not saying that I'm a good blogger. It's just that there is good that bloggers do. We're blogging for social good. And there are some bloggers like that. And I don't want to be a blogging police. Okay, the accreditation has been there since the time of Pinoy. In fact, we were the first bloggers accredited for his inauguration at Luneta and also at the Malacanang Palace. And at that time, they said that they would accredit bloggers and they'll discuss it. But nothing happened. Um, there was uh, opposition from somebody inside Malacanang. Mm -hmm. But then... Um, uh, this the third administration. I was I was approached by PCOO Secretary Martin Andenar, and he wanted bloggers to be part of citizen engagement. I said I wanted citizen engagement, not about um, following um, following the president and all that. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. there was a draft actually uh, yeah, drafted, and the last draft that we I saw was with Trixie. We were, mm -hmm. we were with Trixie because she was already then with PCOO. Mm -hmm. And and we were just defining what's a social media blogger, what's a social media. And and the draft that I saw was uh, certain events. And it's a day uh, event by event accreditation. So it's not a blanket accreditation. So I don't know what's going to happen here under Marcus Jr. Uh, thank you. And uh, thank you also, Noemi, for uh, setting me right. No? Uh, just to be clear, uh, that's my proposed title. Uh, yes. It might be my 25 years of journalism experience. Uh, mm -hmm. But it seemed very natural to have a gatekeeping uh, a notion uh, behind that. No, uh, I apologize. No? I, 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 all I meant was that uh, 
the controversy as I saw it uh, seemed to be defined by the worst possible uh, assumptions some journalists made about bloggers. And I thought that was not a healthy uh, way to respond. Um, so yes, yeah, so th th there's been a long history uh, to this. Um, Professor uh, Diosa, um, um, in a way, uh, we're we're going back to the roots of, uh, in 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 a way, you know, of community journalism when we're encouraging uh, people to you know uh, to, to blog to to write their own stories and and, and so on. Um, I wanted to talk uh, about first the dangers you know, uh, that a, a policy like this announced by incoming PCOO Secretary Trixie Angeles. Uh, poses to the democratic project, and then after that, maybe we can talk positives. No, uh, what what what's the upside here? So maybe we can start with uh, dangers. Okay, um, maybe not dangerous, but I would like mm -hmm. to speak about um, the quandary over the um, journalism's quandary over the accreditation of mm -hmm. uh, bloggers. Um, let me. Let me discuss it from the point of view of uh, journalism. So journalism is one of the identity forming disciplines that we have mm -hmm. in our society. So yung membership ng journalists uh, uh, profession uh, means that they, they have shared values and mm -hmm. we have shared routines, which are all important in fixing our identity. So that's mm -hmm. how we, uh, we can call ourselves journalists by uh, observing standards by observing norms and uh, abiding with codes of ethics. So this sinabi nga nila na technologies may change and economic mm -hmm. circumstances may shift and political clans or political groups may uh, go on a musical chair, but <laughs> journalism um, stays and journalists are still journalists. So yun yung mm -hmm. sinabi natin. So, in other words, uh, if you're a journalist, you know your tasks, and which is, you know, differentiated from other uh, roles that uh, are, you know, um, going are being played by other people in society. Mm -hmm. And and then uh, this this identity that we have uh, is also the source of our self worth. Mm -hmm. um, this is because. Yung clear and stable identity that we know that we are journalists can uh, insulate journalists from conflicts of interest. You know that you're a journalist, you should do PR um, and other forces who would try to attack and undermine the or disparage journalism as a profession. Uh, in other words, uh, this is identity is important to us. That's why I would understand the the you know the criticisms on or the uh, questions raised whether um, some some roles that journalists that mm -hmm. have been performing all this time are now being uh, given to others who uh, are to perform acts of journalism but are uh, are not um, you know do not have the uh, share the burden of uh, uh, what we call truth telling mm -hmm. and uh, um, gatekeeping and observing these norms of ethics. Yung kanina sinabi mo, what about the positive side of it? Um, well, if if the issue there is okay, bloggers have more reach and they are savvy in digital production. Um, I I would say that. Uh, journalism used to be a uh, low barrier entry profession, but no longer mm -hmm. this case because if you look at the profile of journalists, uh, many of many of journalists have uh, you know been trained by uh, journalist journalism schools and they have specialization. They even have their masters uh, and mm -hmm. PhD. So in other mm -hmm. words, um, they this this uh, educational uh, background and profile would testify to the idea that. Uh, increasingly, the ranks of journalism in the country is being professionalized and very mm -hmm. much improved by the, the training and also the education that they have. So what I'm saying is that you journalists can match the digital 
uh, production and distribution that will be offered by bloggers and other digital entrepreneurs. Um, if journalists can also perform uh, tasks as digital journalists. So, mm -hmm. uh, well, madami na sa ating mga colleagues and are, the, are journalists that are digitally trained. And uh, at and the same time, while well, um, they are digitally trained, they are also observing uh, performing journalism uh, as true to the truth-based profession that they are uh, that they are in so yeah um for me parang redundant na because from many networks news organization there are many journalists who are digitally trained mm -hmm. but th th you know there's so much to unpack there no there's so many layers uh, um uh, but i wanted to circle back to the original uh ground of the issue which is journalism because after all this was an announcement uh, the announcement of a uh, proposed policy related to press coverage no um maybe later on if we have time we can talk about uh, other implications of uh, some of the other things that uh, professor labista said um but I, I wanted to go back to uh, the journalistic lens that has been used from the start to understand this issue. Again, I understand why that was the lens that was used because Trixie Angeles was talking about press coverage. But Noemi, is it the right lens with which to understand a policy like this? Uh, should we understand it from the perspective of journalists, from the perspective of uh, citizen engagement, from the perspective of government propaganda? I mean, uh, what kind of lens should we use? The, the way I understood it was uh, press coverage mm -hmm. because uh, that's what uh, the, the vloggers of Marcos Jr. was doing during the campaign. I, right. I, didn't, uh, I didn't relate it to what we were in our minds uh, about bloggers uh, covering Malacanang before, which was mm -hmm. citizen engagement, like mm -hmm. a feedback mechanism and policy mm -hmm. changes. Um, what do we think about existing policies that need to be changed, uh, laws that need to be passed? Uh, when it comes to news, there is something there that we want to give a feedback. But in this case, I think it's just a uh, one-way loop if uh in in the marcos jr that's the way i look at it uh mm -hmm. just giving a press coverage and then that's it and then they will distribute it to the community as mm -hmm. um you you may know bloggers have communities and that's why you mm -hmm. cannot um generalize bloggers because each of them have their own communities and that's why they also have, they're also nano influencers even how small they are they mm -hmm. can give they can give the news to, to this group, which is also in a way influential. Now, um, there, uh, I was talking to uh, Leviste about the training, digital training journalists going mm -hmm. to digital training. We mm -hmm. bloggers were also trained in some journalistic process uh, mm -hmm. uh, practices. In 2009, we, uh, a, a bunch of us were trained for covering elections. And then there were other courses throughout the years from it's 13 years now so there are a bunch of us who who were trained to cover news and opinions and underplayed stories and that was the beauty of bloggers because there are some stories that are not being picked up by legacy media and mm -hmm. we picked it up and it brought about some policy changes or laws and our advocacies so that's for me there that is that is the good that bloggers do we mm -hmm. complement the news and we amplify it so i i don't know where this uh, <laughs> um, uh, insecurity is coming from for me i think it's insecurity because 2008 pa lang, i mean you know we have had a bad name that's why we were called blog watch because i wanted to elevate the name of bloggers mm -hmm. and uh, every year there's always some controversy in fact there was a name the the bad blogger so it, this is an issue we, which is time immemorial i keep repeating and repeating 
Mm -hmm. That's right. In fact, uh, this is not the first uh, controversy uh, between journalists and bloggers. Uh, when mm -hmm. I used to be an active blogger myself uh, in the early 2000s, uh, I was already embroiled, uh, you know, in the middle of these uh, debates. No, uh, uh, maybe later we can also go back to something a phrase that Josa uh, uh, used, no, acts of journalism. Uh, so there are bloggers who are uh, at, at a particular moment in time when they are committing acts of journalism uh, meet the standards of, uh, of journalism. But I think it would be wrong to understand their role in society as that of being, you know, incomplete journalists. No? It just so happens that that's one of their responsibilities. No? Uh, they can commit acts of journalism. Um, uh, Josa, um, Noemi talked about the two-way uh, loop. No, it's a, a bloggers as a feedback mechanism. Would that be a clear win, a clear upside for this policy? No, that you get people uh, giving feedback to the administration. Um, yes, uh, on the side of bloggers, that's that's also um, ongoing. I mean, that's also. Mm -hmm. Um, happening, but it's also true in journalism. In other words, uh, what bloggers are doing are also possible in journalism, given the technology. Mm -hmm. So in other words, uh, it, now we hear um, the, the, the acts of journalism, um, whether performed by, by bloggers and, and journalists, are, uh, what I'm saying is the 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 standards the the performance or of of uh, duties are permeable so in other words wala na siyang divide right mm -hmm. um because as noemi said they are also covering and they are also uh giving feedback this is also true in in, in journalism uh, with technology uh, the, with technology journalists and news organization can easily uh get the feedback and uh, enhance to enhance the way in which they they cover the news. So uh, feedback is not probably the 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 category by which you should we should uh, uh, like say differentiate uh, mm -hmm. what the what uh, what is blogging, what is journalism. So there could be other there could be other ways to to see the difference, but it's hard these days because of the blurring of lines and and the uh, permeability of of this uh, of this uh, what acts of journalism, whether performed by bloggers or journalists. Um, so how do we view or how do we assess then the role of bloggers and uh, journalists? Could it be the their adherence to democratic uh, responsibility, the democratic responsibilities. Mm -hmm. um, could it be that? Or could it be the, the how they observe, uh, how they perform the roles as independent monitor of power, whether they are uh, critical or whether they hold public officials accountable? Is that a way that we uh, should view uh, the differences between these two roles? Um, in, in mm -hmm. other words, the when it comes to partisanship, um, who who should be how to how should we look at uh, these two groups, the bloggers and journalists, um, and and the way in which they are now seen by the public, uh, and probably uh, the factor pro, uh, to to consider when when they go undergo accreditation. So. Yeah. Paano ba yung accreditation doon? Um, uh, is this, uh, are there uh, guidelines and are these guidelines even made public for us to know why are certain why are certain groups or certain bloggers or certain individuals accredited and what uh, groups or uh, political uh, affiliations do they represent? So maybe that, that should be the question on how, how they would be, how they would perform um, when they're covering, for example, the, the president, uh, the, the role of being independent monitor of power and how, 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 would, how would they hold public officials accountable? This is 
because I think it's part of the democratic responsibilities of those uh, covering the president or uh, shall we say how or any any uh, branches of government yeah when uh, Joseph when you speak of uh, journalism as an independent uh, monitor of power and apply that to uh, bloggers uh, uh, that, that, it reminds me you know, that that's one of the elements of journalism you know, uh, standards that were codified uh, by uh, Bill Kovach uh, and uh, Tom Rosenstiel. Uh, so that's one of the elements to be an independent monitor of power. Uh, this goes back to the point that you raised earlier about a set of standards. No? So journalism is a set of practices and routines governed by a set of standards. Noims, uh, is there a an equivalent set of standards uh, for bloggers is that is that even something uh, uh, to consider? There has never been a universal code of ethics, mm -hmm. but uh, we are encouraged to have our own blogger code of ethics. Each blogger has to have their individual mm -hmm. uh, code of ethics, and there are a lot of templates going around since two thousand eight. And we have discussed it in blogging forums. We even had blogging, blog and soul. And uh, it's similar to journalistics like be honest and fair, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, never plagiarize, identify and link sources. So, so those are the discussions we had. And of course, those were the early bloggers. And at that time, we didn't have, uh, you know, blogging. We just mm -hmm. we were just writing. Mm -hmm. But um, I have to stress that uh, bloggers have communities and each community have a certain code of ethics within their community and and mm -hmm. they, they uh, and it's already understood. That's why I cannot say I speak for bloggers because I can mm -hmm. only speak for my community. And um, so when there's a blogger doing, oh, okay, so that's how they do things. So in, in response to example, there is a blogger doing something uh, mm -hmm what's this, out of our ethics, we blog separately. So it's a counter blog post against <laughs> each other. So, so mm -hmm. if, um, example, a product blogger doesn't like what I said tonight, mm -hmm. they will blog about it. So it's like that. Um, it's counter blogging. So it, it, seems, it, it seems to me that's, that's very much like the internet uh, uh, ethos, no? I mean... Yeah. Uh, you have the technology, you have the capacity to uh, present your own stance. No? Uh, mm -hmm. But my question, Noims, here uh, is if uh, your perspective is shared by most bloggers, um, that you know, you, you, nobody really speaks for uh, a blogging community, uh, a blogging uh, world in general, but to, uh, speaks for specific communities, uh, how would that play into the accreditation process? I mean, um, you would so, for instance, uh, in uh, in broadcasting, you have the Kapisanan broad broadcaster in the Philippines, no? Uh, in a way, that's that's already a form of uh, uh, a vetting, also, right? Um, how 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 would that work? Um, you would have then the Malacanang Palace accrediting. Uh, all sorts of bloggers who really cannot be classified into the same, you know, uh, same box, for instance. So that was a discussion we had. So mm -hmm. the, the bloggers in Malacanang is a community in itself. So they have to decide their universal code of ethics in covering mm -hmm. the president. Or, mm -hmm. uh, but we haven't, we didn't go that far. But that was a suggestion because mm -hmm. you have to be a, you have to be unified when you're huh, there the unity you mm -hmm. you know you have to be <laughs> united when mm -hmm. you cover the press and, and you need to follow certain standards so I call that a community of bloggers so whether you are um, pro admin or an anti admin I don't know if they will get an anti admin or anti Marcos mm -hmm. in, in that community what I would well, say. That I would suggest that they establish their universal code of ethics to put a, to put the journalist at ease, you know. Yeah. Uh, so that would be one of the tests, I guess, right, uh, of the new policy. You know, uh, if uh, they are if, if the new uh, accredita accreditation guidelines will allow uh, critical voices. 
from among bloggers to be accredited to cover Malacanang. I think that might be a step forward. But as you said, uh, you're 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 already worried that it might just be a one-way uh, mechanism, a one-way. It's not even a loop, no. It's just a one no, one direction. One yeah. But yeah. we are ready for that. We 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 are ready for. Uh, as I said to you, uh, we will counter blog posts, whatever they were going to write. So, you know, uh, journalists shouldn't uh, fear the, that these bloggers will take over the news because we we'll have to continue writing. Mm -hmm. And we can still complement each other, the journal journalists who will, the Malacanang Press Corps, who will cover the president, will continue writing. And then there are these bloggers who are not accredited or the social media and other bloggers will continue writing and complement the journalists who are, who are accredited at Malacanang. Now, the bloggers in Malacanang, they're their own niche. So they will be just, uh, for me, they, I would call them, they're just the, the pro Marcus bloggers. Mm -hmm. They're propaganda. So it's mm -hmm. all uh, administration propaganda. That's mm -hmm. not engagement anymore. Propagandist, basically. That be, yeah, that would just be mm -hmm. propaganda. Yeah. Um, um, go ahead, John. Uh, and I, yeah, no, I miss a point. Um, he was saying that there are many bloggers communities, um, uh, and they have their own sets of uh guidelines to follow. And I think, uh, we, we cannot, uh, we recognize that the diversity of blogging bloggers' interests, um, and I think that. And and that's uh, and that's something that you have to welcome. In other words, they come from many different uh, uh, perspectives, and uh, they have different takes on a particular uh, phenomenon or reality or situation. And at the same time, it's also problematic because um, while journalists, you know, that you can hold immediately hold them accountable because uh, they they have uh, they are employed by news organizations and they have uh, codes of ethics to follow and they also have mm -hmm. guidelines it's difficult to impose the same to to uh, bloggers and yet the coverage of presidency is an important story that uh, that the media has to pursue or anyone doing an, an acts of journalism um, has to pursue and it's that's this is a, that for a long time and for many years, if not decades, uh, that is the that is the the role or that is the job of journalists. Uh, as you say, we're the, remember we're the fourth estate. Mm -hmm. We we look at other branches of government and uh, play watch the role. And uh, for me, if bloggers will be there in Malacanang and performing acts of journalism, they say they're going to inform, they say they are going to provide uh, the public with uh, the voices or the uh, of authoritative voices from the president. Um, I, I, I uh, would think that they should be uh, assessed or they should be uh, how you say that? We should be judged um, through the performance of, uh, I, I mean, they should be judged using the standards of journalism. And after all, they are performing um, acts of journalism. Um, in other words, uh, for, for truthfulness, for ac accuracy, for mm -hmm. uh, the way that they verify information uh, and fairness, I mean, these are, these are, I think, uh, some of the norms that uh, have to be observed, especially when you handle information that has, uh, you know, uh, intended to be released to the public. And it, um, it involves public uh, welfare and public interest. And these are already stepping into what we call the public sphere. And in, in that sphere, um, you have to be uh, accountable as a person who who uh, disseminate the, um, who's, who's disseminating information, and for me, it is also crucial to to, to assess or to um, how you say that uh, bind those, those persons performing acts of journalism, especially cover the presidency, to mm -hmm. certain standards of how they 
would uh, evaluate information before releasing to the public and where, whether just this information is really for the public and not to uh, you know to uh, you know inten not intended for certain groups only which is mm -hmm. a narrow um, a, a narrow uh, should we say um, how do you say that? Uh, it is. It's not for the public release, but only to benefit certain groups or, or narrow interests. Yeah. I, I want to be clear about my own uh, perspective here. I, 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 uh, I do not welcome the new policy, uh, not because it's not good in itself, but because uh, I see it as part of an attempt to create, to establish an alternative media uh, infrastructure. No? Uh, but having said that. Uh, when we reflect uh, on on the citizen engagement that is uh, possibly being uh, may, uh, brought within reach, no? um, I can I can see the appeal of widening access to presidential press briefings. No? Uh, again, I share the view of the NUJP. Uh, uh, they raise their concerns about protecting the space. For journalists, but they also said, but giving people wider access to, you know, hearing the president explain himself, that can only be a good thing, All right? That can only be a good thing. Uh, so uh, uh, for me, it, it's a question of navigating uh, between uh, what I fear is the goal of uh, the incoming administration, which is to use this for propaganda, uh, and the possibility of actually turning this new poli uh, policy into something good, uh, something that might uh, reinforce our uh, democratic uh, traditions. I know it's a you know it's a, it's a stretch no, between these two, but that's 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 where I'm coming from. I mean that's that's how I understand this, I, and I'm a little worried that if we only look at it from the perspective of journalism, we might miss out certain things. Uh, I, I'm not sure which lens to offer. I was asking Noemi earlier, for instance, but maybe citizen engagement is already uh, uh, an important enough lens uh, uh, to to understand the participation of uh, bloggers. Um, uh, Jose, you, you, were, you were talking er earlier about specialization, prof professionalization, and of course, that's a good thing, right? Um, but... I think for the democratic project, would it also be good to invite, quote unquote, uh, amateurs to also uh, take part uh, uh, in dis disseminating information? I, I, I mean, amateurs, quote unquote, in the sense that they are not professional journalists, no? uh, but, you know, they, they, they may have training in their own fields, you know, they may be licensed here and there, uh, and then they approach... Um, a particular press briefing, and from their own perspective, based on their own uh, background, uh, they they uh, they report on that, and then they report on that to their own communities. Uh, Diosa, wouldn't that be a good thing for democracy? Mm, yeah, I think that's it's even more democratic, and I mean the the access to information is democratized, um, and if they are doing that as a uh, group of uh, citizen journalists or group of, of specialists and that's also mm -hmm. welcome i mean they, they can mm -hmm. have their take they, they could be something mm -hmm. like pop popular think tanks for example or more oh that's great uh, mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean more giving people more access and they're specialists for example they're a group of economists and they're mm -hmm. they're doing comments uh, or commentaries on on what the president would say or what any official would say and that's also welcome uh but still uh if they have to do it in public, they have to adhere to certain standards that mm -hmm. they uh, they have to consider public interest and that the diversity of uh, opinion should also be respected. That they also they also have to uh, fact check, to verify, and to ensure that what they're saying are uh, you know tr are truthful, and they could not just twist information, especially if they are taking the public space and uh, engaging with uh, the public and also the media because they are non-media 
Um, in other words, um, the, these are these are uh, information uh, dissemination practices, and while we also welcome them, we also have to hold them accountable for the standards at which they vet the information and they mm -hmm. verify information, and also they have to be transparent and declare their conflicts of interest and and who is behind them and why are they doing mm -hmm. it. And because journalists are quite transparent about such things that the, that when they are doing, for example, the coverage, they are accredited with new, they are employed in news organization and they have mm -hmm. uh, standards to follow and they they uh, um, you know sub, submit themselves to gatekeeping uh, and verification processes and mm -hmm. anyone who would who would uh, you know. Um, perform similar acts must also adhere to the standards that journalists uh, have observed which is really a general thing about when you when you take home information um what should you do you verify it you make sure that it's accurate you don't twist you don't lie and you mm -hmm. don't resort to incivilities uh you should be uh respectful of uh, the many diverse or the many uh, points of views that the public might hold. So I think uh, I'm, I'm, if we are opening up, if we are um, you know, opening up on trying to mm -hmm. democratize access, we should at least have clear standards by which we should judge or we should assess people who are trying to, make, to you know, disseminate information. Well, like even... Yes. Okay. No, 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 I was right about thing because um, we we already establish our own standards as as you know uh, some bloggers have already because um, adherence to the standards of quality and ethical principles give credit credibility to blogs, mm -hmm. and we have also placed disclosures in all our blog posts and um, where we're coming from and correction policy. I don't know if other bloggers do that, but some bloggers have already started doing that. Disclosure is very important to us, and that has been done since 2008. Who's behind us, and and if we have advertising and all of that. So we have already started transparency, accountability, and then we disagree without being disagreeable. And mm -hmm. we believe in um, that bloggers will not last long if you don't have credibility and without establishing standards. I mean, they're bloggers like over 15 years who are still blogging and we evolve, you know, journalists should evolve. They shouldn't, I mean, if you were blogging about a written posts and now we're into blogging. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and, and, and journalists have evolved to the digital space. So why can't we complement each other? So we will continue doing acts of journalism because we are good in a certain field. For example, we are good in economic, we are bloggers who are good in economics, who, mm -hmm. who are good in um, writing about agriculture or finance. So those are niche blogs and they are all around. No? So I think uh, we are just so exposed to the vloggers in TikTok and mm -hmm. uh, don't get me wrong also on tiktok because i have to, i had to evolve that's so right <laughs> i had to evolve to tiktok and i'm also in youtube shorts and um i i, I don't like being called a journalist but um uh, that's what people call me sometimes uh, but i say that i'm a blogger first because we have crossed over like i'm a columnist now we have crossed mm -hmm. over and there's journalists who have crossed over so why can't we live in harmony, you know, complement each other? Yeah, uh, I'm, we're, we're uh, running uh, short, so maybe just a, a couple more questions. Uh, uh, Noims, there used to be uh, awards, you know, given to, you know, yeah. bloggers and, and so on. Yeah, yeah. Do you think that civil society has a role to play uh, moving forward, you know? Uh, have a, for instance, uh, the equivalent of the Rotary Club of Manila uh, Journalism Awards, no? uh, but this time for for bloggers as a, as a way to uh, surface or to highlight uh, good practices. Uh, just a quick question: Do you think that will work? 
I'm so and the, you know, bloggers are so diverse. And we had uh, an awarding before in the late uh, to, um, 2008, 2009, only because uh, blogging had a bad name. So we went, mm-hmm. we had through this award ceremony. I don't know if, uh, if we have this kind of awards. Maybe, yes. It, it would also highlight the best practices of bloggers and mm-hmm. highlight the good, the, what blogging does for good because uh what they always show us now are the the bloggers who are causing this information so mm-hmm. we need to bring out the good bloggers out there you know that bloggers should do good okay and then one last question for the two of you uh there's already some track record uh as far as bloggers accredited to cover uh presidential press briefings no uh as far as that whole thing is concerned no uh, under the Duterte administration, we've had some bloggers who covered uh, the ASEAN summit, uh, for instance. Uh, but that has petered out. No, I think they showed up in one or two of these summits, and then they they didn't come back. Uh, that's my understanding. So my question for the two of you, maybe first Josa, and then we end with uh, Noemi. Do you think uh, this new policy will last? Do you do you see this as uh, becoming part? in fact, of the new norm, not just an experiment? Mm. I still have to see the guidelines because I really, I'm mean, really interested to know what the guidelines would be for choosing who should cover the president, um, um, should be accredited as bloggers to cover the president because I'm interested in the the track record of those bloggers and their body of work, whether they are really capable of uh, covering such an important beat in the country. And uh, I would also like to see um, whether they are doing it for on their own uh, and uh, and they are oriented to uh, spreading, disseminating information for the public in general and not just for certain groups. Uh, in other words, uh, partisan groups. Mm-hmm. So uh, I would like to, I would still would uh, be interested to know um, who are they and what they are doing okay. and what they are uh, there for and who 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 are behind them. And Noam said they should they should be transparent. So in other mm-hmm. words, uh, it's hard to see because for bloggers, you you, you say that there is they are part of a certain blogging community. There's no universality of all. Uh, in the standards to which we view them, unlike in journalists, in journalism, when you you know there's a reporter, uh, he or she has to follow certain norms and he has to to be accountable to the news organization and to the public in general, and that makes the whole thing complicated. We're not. Uh, I'm not saying that we should not open uh, access to information. Um, to, for for those beats like the the, the mm-hmm. like Malacanang, but we're saying is we need we need to to uh, to know if uh, if bloggers are accredited um, what who are they and what's and if they're also willing to follow standards on on how to handle information that are meant to be pub, pub to for the public whether they would verify it whether they would uh, you know hold themselves accountable mm-hmm. and yeah. make corrections and also fact check uh, their information thank you noims do you think it will last Yes, this 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 time it it's will last because there is. Um, uh, I think Marcus Jr. really wants to have a to have a say in in all of his policies. The, mm-hmm. the thing about ASEAN was because we were the host, and then the, mm-hmm. the social media policy was to share it to not just the Philippines but all mm-hmm. over the ASEAN countries. So mm-hmm. that was a that was an event accreditation. So that I was see. not exactly um malakanyang or a pcoo accreditation it was for that event it was a big event i see well uh we've run out of time uh thank you very much uh miss doimi dado dr diosa labiste thank you for your time your insights and your work illuminating the public square I want to be clear, I am deeply skeptical of this proposed policy. But uh, at least in this case, the proof of the pudding is in the recipe. Uh, We need to take a look at uh, certain ingredients. Uh, 
in the accreditation process, are we looking at, uh, you know, transparency, uh, quality standards, uh, hospitality to uh, critical voices? I think these are tests uh, that this proposed policy must uh, pass uh, before we can embrace it. Well, uh, that's it. That's it for us tonight. Um, the next step for engaged citizens is always to take a more active part in rebuilding our democracy. See you in the public square. This is John Neri. Thank you and good night.